Hello and welcome to Here's What's Cooking at Key Chorale. This is your opportunity to discover more about the music, the composers, and the creativity that goes into each and every Key Chorale performance. Come along with me for this episode as we explore what makes Equinox, a Celtic celebration, a must-see event. We open our season performing jigs, reels, and folk songs inspired by the Emerald Isle. Enjoy tenor Brad Diamond, Foley's all-star Irish band, and the chorale as we perform timeless melodies and the infectious rhythms of Celtic music on September 24th at 4 p.m. The autumnal equinox is an important celebration for the ancient Celts. This celebration has been referred to as Mabon, named after the ancient Welsh sun god. It is a time of balance, a time when we have the same amount of lightness and darkness. When we see the change from the haze of summer, to the cool of fall. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying we live in Florida. Is there really any change from summer to fall in Florida? Well, of course there is. That's when the temperatures cool down to a wonderful 85 degrees, the humidity drops to 75%, and we prepare for hurricanes. So kidding aside, I saw this fall festival as an opportunity to program a concert featuring the music of Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. There are a lot of pieces you'll recognize, including The Rocky Road to Dublin, Wild Mountain Time, Annie Laurie, and of course, Danny Boy. And I think you'll also find a few pieces that you will enjoy as much as we do performing them. Well, certainly if you're gonna plan a Celtic show, you have to have bagpipes. So let's talk bagpipes. When we think of bagpipes, we invariably what comes to mind is are the Scottish bagpipes usually a large group of five or more pipers and drummers all in their kilts and Scottish regalia. And you would think that the origin of the bagpipes is truly Scottish, but actually bagpipes go back as far as 400 BC in Egypt. And several hundred years later, one of the most famous champions of the pipes is said to have been the great Roman Emperor Nero, who may well have been piping rather than fiddling while Rome burned. Woo, that's hot. It's surprising to know that bagpipes have existed in various forms throughout the world for centuries. In each country, the construction of the basic instrument comprises the same three parts. One, an air supply, two, a bag with a chanter, and three, one or more drones. The bag, commonly made from animal skin, works as an airtight reservoir to hold the air and regulate its flow, thus allowing the piper to breathe and maintain a continuous sound both at the same time. The chanter is the melody pipe, usually played by one or two hands. This melody is played above one to three drones, which is a low sustained pitch. The Highland pipes were first mentioned as a musical instrument of war in 1549 at the Battle of Pinkey, when the pipes replaced trumpets to help inspire the Highlanders into battle. It is said that the shrill and penetrating sound worked well in the roar of battle and that the pipes could be heard at distances up to 10 miles away. Bagpipes were used in war during the Highland uprisings of the early 1700s, and following the defeat of Bonnie Prince Charlie in 1746, the government in London attempted to crush the rebellious clan system. An act of parliament was passed, which made the carrying of weapons, such as those vicious bagpipes, and the wearing of kilts a penal offense. Well, a lot has changed since 1746, and now the Highland Pipes are considered one of the greatest musical and cultural treasures of Scotland. But I have to say, they are very loud. And for that reason, we will feature a Scottish pipe band outdoors. Before the concert, you'll have the great opportunity to hear a very fine pipe and drum band from 3.15 to 3.45 p.m. We'll be featuring Blue Sky, Pipe and Drums, an all-female pipe and Celtic performance band, just to get you inspired before the concert and get you in the mood for the concert, which begins at 4 p.m. The other famous Celtic bagpipe is the Irish Pipes. They are kind of the quiet, subtle, more gentle brother of the Scottish Pipes. These pipes are played a little differently. Usually the player sits the bag that holds the air is blown up with your elbow, which gives its name the Illian Pipes, meaning elbow. These pipes are much more versatile than the Scottish pipes. They're able to play in more keys, and they have more options and controls over the various drones that can be used. The Illian Pipes have a more sweet sound than the Scottish pipes. 
And spoiler alert, the last instrument you hear in the movie Braveheart is not the Scottish pipes, but the Illin pipes. I know, these are important things to know. Well, for this concert, we wanted to feature this instrument and have one of the best Irish pipe players in the country. Emmon Dillon was born in West Belfast, Northern Ireland. And he has toured and recorded both as a solo artist and with various performers throughout the world. His playing has been featured in several films and television programs. And we are truly excited to have such a great musician to share this incredible instrument with our audience. And we're also looking to forward to what? What? We have another pipe? Another pipe? What pipe? Who could pipe? That's for another concert. In addition to the Irish pipes, we have an incredibly talented band that are steeped in traditional Irish music. They are really the who's who of Celtic music, and we are thrilled to have Foley's all-star Irish band with us. The band is led by Dylan Foley, a four-time All-Ireland fiddle champion. Dylan was raised in upstate New York. He says he started playing the fiddle at the age of eight and was inspired by virtuoso Jay Unger. He was first crowned an Irish fiddle champion at the sprightly age of 12. He later won another two youth brackets and was eventually crowned adult champion in 2014. Dylan is six foot seven. I'm barely five foot, I feel like. His nickname in Ireland is the Big Yank. He has quite a following in Ireland, as you can imagine. He stands out both for his music and for his six foot seven inch frame. Joining Dylan will be renowned singer, songwriter, and amazing guitarist, Brian Hanlon. Brian was raised in Cork City, Ireland and Boston, Massachusetts. He is a sought after studio musician and is about to release a new recording made with an all-star cast of Grammy winning musicians. When you think of Celtic music, it's impossible not to think of the tin whistle. This woodwind instrument is played like a recorder vertically instead of horizontally like a flute. It has a mouthpiece and six holes that you change pitches by using various fingerings. We often hear tin whistle players bending notes, which they do by the way they move and release their fingers over these six holes. This instrument has been known by various names like the Irish penny whistle, the Scottish penny whistle, and even the English flagellate. It was in 1843, the same year Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol, that the young entrepreneur Robert Clark invented the modern day tin whistle. It became very common in the early 1900s all over the UK. In fact, it got its nickname, the Penny Whistle, because it could be purchased for a mere penny. With the surge of the Celtic revival in the 1960s and 70s, this woodwind instrument has become more and more recognizable worldwide, thanks to bands like the Clancy Brothers, the Chieftains, and the Irish Rovers. We are fortunate to have with us Sean Cunningham. He's one of the great whistle and flute players in the country. Sean began playing Irish flute and tin whistle in 1996. As a child, he grew up listening to the classical Irish balladeers, such as the Clancy Brothers, Dubliners, and the Wolf Tones. But it was actually in the pubs of New York City where he learned about traditional Irish music. Eventually, he joined the Irish rock band Six Mile Bridge and spent the better part of three years touring the country and recording three studio albums with the band. Sean has had the opportunity to play on the Grand Old Opry and PBS television shows Music City Roots and Bluegrass Underground. Another instrument we are featuring in this nod to Ireland and Scotland is the dulcimer. There are two kinds of dulcimer. There's the mountain dulcimer, which looks a little bit like a guitar, often an hourglass shape, and is played by fretting and strumming on the strings. The other is the hammered dulcimer, which is played by striking the strings with a pair of special mallets called hammers giving its name. Hammered dulcimer has its origins all the way back to the Middle East around 900 AD. Throughout the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance, the dulcimer remained a popular instrument in both Eastern and Western Europe. It was known by many different names in many different countries. But I have to say, when I think of the hammered dulcimer, I think of Celtic music. We'll be featuring a new work by Sean Kirchner titled, I Will Arise and Go. Its text comes from the poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree by William Butler Yeats. This pastoral poem really captures the essence of the solitude and the beauty of the landscape. The poem starts out, I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin built there, 
of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. This piece is clearly one of my favorites. The harmony is just gorgeous, and it truly captures the essence of Yeats's love of his native Ireland. The last member of the band to introduce is Stephen Humphreys. He is a national hammered dulcimer champion, freelance percussionist, and an award-winning music educator. Stephen has released five full-length Hammer Dulcimer albums and is currently working on a new one. He has published two instructional method books for students of the Hammer Dulcimer and is truly the Dulcimer guru of the United States. He will be featured in this beautiful piece along with Key Corral and Lily Wool, who sounds absolutely stunning and just happens to have beautiful red hair too. Now, if you're going to have an Irish show, you have to have an Irish tenor. Well, we have one of my favorite tenors joining us. Brad Diamond is a professor of voice and vocal pedagogy at Samford University. His clear and lyric voice is perfectly suited to these beautiful melodies from Ireland and Scotland. Diamond's discography includes multiple Grammy nominations, and he can regularly be heard presenting significant performance projects on Samford's campus and as a professional singer with groups like Seraphic Fire and the Desert Chorale. He'll be performing an inspirational ballad titled Grace and a really beautiful song titled She Moved Through the Fair, the Scottish song Annie Laurie, and the deeply moving Danny Boy. He will also be showcasing his ability to sing one million Gaelic words in less than three minutes. We have two amazing arrangements that will feature Brad, the key chorale, and percussionist Stephen Humphreys on Boran. This is the first time I've taught the chorale to sing in Gaelic, and I will tell you that Gaelic looks nothing like it should. So it's been a challenge and quite fun to learn, quite frankly, but you'll have to come to the concert to see how it all comes together. We'll leave you with one of those Gaelic songs titled Dulaman, a song about seaweed. Really, seaweed. Well, it's also one of the most exciting pieces rhythmically with a catchy tune you'll be humming well after the performance. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Here's What's Cooking. We'll leave you with a little teaser of Dulaman. Hope to see you at the concert September 24th.